You know, I certainly appreciate the way you and Mrs. Corcoran have treated me these last few days. I mean, after all, I'm a veritable stranger, a veritably unknown. And here, you and Mrs. Corcoran have generously treated me as though I, I were practically a member of the immediate family. Uh, Kelly said something about, uh, you're laying your cards on the table. Were those your cards? Or... No, no, I ju I'm just kind of shuffling that. Uh, this is actually my deal now. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, and just, just plain old-fashioned corny lingo, sir. Uh, I have fallen head over heels with your Kelly here. Uh, it just, you know, it didn't take me long to make up my mind. One good look did it, actually, if you want to know the truth. But uh, I'm the kind of crazy hairpin that just doesn't need much more than that. And then that's it for life with me. Now, there is a slight complication. Uh, I happen to be a newlywed. Um, I, uh, I made the big mistake about five days ago in New York. Uh, and when I say big, sir, I, I mean Radio City Music Hall big. Um, you may have seen her around the pool. She's a, a nice girl. Um, but just uh, not, not, not really my type. Uh, I married her because I, I thought it was the decent thing to do. And I've learned that uh, decency doesn't doesn't always pay off. Uh, so I, I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, get out. Uh, uh, it'll be difficult, but not impossible. Not, not when you're as determined as I am. And sitting opposite you, Mr. Corcoran, is probably the most determined young man that you have ever seen. <laughs> now, I, I know that you, you are going back to... Um, Minneapolis tomorrow, and it's my plan, just as soon as I uh, work out this messy business here, to uh, to follow you out to Minnesota, to uh, get myself set up there, and to uh, lay claim to your, your lovely daughter here. Um, those are my cards, and uh, Mr. Corcoran, there's, there's, there's not a joker in the bunch. Now, having... Uh, Spoken my piece, I, I, I would like I would like to know, uh, in all candor, how you feel about what I've said, and uh, to ask if I have your approval. Not if they tied me to a horse and pulled me forty miles by my tongue. Well, sir, that's that's an honest answer, sir. Mm -hmm. Not if they hung me from a tree and put a little bomb in my mouth. I respect your frankness. I think we understand how we, how we stand now. It's not a question of my not approving of you. It's a question of... I don't like one goddamn thing about you. Uh, well, uh, initial judgments very often are misleading. See, I found that out to, to, to my uh, sorrow, sir. Hey, you come hanging around my daughter on your honeymoon? Hang around your wife. Don't hang around my daughter. Dwayne, you're shouting, dear. Please. Five days he's married, for God's sake. Five days. Darling, please. Where's respect for the institution of marriage? See, once I get rid of my mistakes, or I'm willing to show you all the respect that you would like. Uh, get him out of here. Get him out before yeah, I dear. take him into the men's room and break all the respect You've in his body. You've made your point now, Dwayne. Uh, in other please. words, if I may, sir, in other words, what you're saying is that... Uh, if I want Kelly, I'm going to have to put up a hell of a fight, then. Is, is, is that, uh... He's a nut. He's some kind of a goddamn nut. Get him out of yes, here. Yes, dear, please, Matthew. Get him don't, out. Just don't get upset, dear. Maybe, maybe this isn't oh. the proper time to discuss this. Now, Mrs. Corcoran, I hope that you, you will be able to see my position in this thing. And Kelly, uh, uh, perhaps look for me, because I'm, I'm coming. Uh, you stay husband. away from her. I don't hand out my daughter to newlyweds. Yeah. Well, thank Why you. didn't you go to Niagara Falls like everybody else? Thank you. Thank you for everything, sir. And look for me, Kelly, because I'm coming. Uh, I I'm coming. You stay the hell out of Minnesota, you goddamn newlywed. Thank you. Dwayne. Am I talking to myself? You beat four shells. <laughs>
<laughs> is it terrific? Is it terrific? Did I exaggerate? Is it worth waiting for? It's fantastic. Okay, now. Save some room for that great pecan pie, right? The yummy, yum pecan pie. That hurt me, sir. Lenny, are you going to tell me something that you want to discuss? last thing that you should be worrying about tonight, really. Just enjoy yourself, enjoy your dinner. You know. I am. I really am. What is it, Lenny? What did you want to tell me? Hmm? <clears throat> Pardon me, sir? I'm afraid we're a little late with the pecan pie. Chef tells me we ran out about ten minutes ago. Would you like to order something else? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you, is it, are you joking? What, how's it? No pecan pie? Sorry, sir. No pecan pie? Honey, what are you doing? Do I, have to... I mean, the main reason we came here is for the pecan pie. Oh, that's all right. Honey. No, it's not all right. I mean, they should have said that to us at the door. I mean, they should have warned us that there was a danger of running out of pecan pie. Well, there is one small piece left in the kitchen. Would you want that one piece? We also have some excellent blueberry pie. I mean, we drove all the way from New York. Listen, take it. Take the pecan pie. We can share it. I don't want to share it. I promised my wife the pecan pie. I want you to bring the pecan pie for my wife. Yes, I promise, just bring me some coffee. No blueberry pie? What do I want any blueberry pie for? Yes, sir. It's not a reject, is it? I mean, it's a perfectly good piece of pie, right? Yes, sir. It really bugs me, boy. No, no, I mean, I've been talking about that pie as far back as Virginia. If I'd have given him ten bucks, you'd have a pecan pie flying out of your ears by now. They got it bad there. Honey, I'm getting the pie. I'm very happy. Honey. Tonight's been the best night of our whole trip. Hasn't it? Aren't you happy tonight? See, that's, that's part of what I wanted to talk about. Um, geez, it's warm in here. You know, you pay these kind of prices, the air conditioning is faulty in here. It's just... I think it's probably your sunburn. Go on, then. What were you going to say? No, I was just, I was just going to say that, uh, um, that, uh, why are we sitting out on the hot courtroom steps this afternoon? Uh, I was thinking that in three weeks, you're going to be 22 years old. Twelve. Right. And the really fantastic thing about being 22 years old is that you have your whole life in front of you. I know, we both have. And... I mean, the people you could meet, the places you could go, the things that you could do, it's just... Yeah. Lenny, I never thought that I'd get to Florida. That's right. I mean, what some women would not get to be 22 years old, it's just a... Uh, That's right. I know it. To go when you want to do, to live. To live. Do you know what I mean? To live. Is that what you mean, Lenny? We only pass through once, right? I mean, we can't squander it. No matter what happens, we just passing this way but one time. We can't squander it. Once is a lot. Once is a whole lifetime. That's why we have to use and learn from anything that happens. We have to learn from the good, from the bad. From the happiness, from the tragedy. We have to learn. We have to use it all. Just use it all. 
You're so deep, Lenny. I never knew that you were so deep. sense at all what I'm trying to uh, say? Um, do, do you, uh... Oh, Christ, it's so hot in here. Is it hot in here or is it hot in here? What? I, I, I don't understand. What, is, what are you trying to tell no, me? No, I mean, I'm getting me, nervous. Let me, let me. I'm trying to say. We have to prepare ourselves. We have to prepare ourselves for anything, you know? I mean, everything could be terrific. The world could be singing. And then suddenly, suddenly for no reason at all, it's over. It's, it's over, Lyle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Lenny. I think I know what you're trying to tell me. I, look, I didn't want it to happen. I didn't plan it. You're good. You're good. You deserve better than me. You deserve much better than me. I didn't want it to happen. I didn't plan anything like this. Oh, Lenny. Oh, Lenny. Oh, my God, Lenny. <laughs> Oh, Lenny, you're dying. Oh, Lenny, you've got something and you never told me. Oh, Lenny. I'm not dying. Who said anything about dying? I went out of the marriage. I went out of the goddamn marriage. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. Listen to me, listen to me. We're not right for each other. We're not right for each other. It didn't work out. I tried to tell you as far back as Virginia, but you couldn't see it. You were too busy yelling pee-pee every two minutes. Lenny, make it to the bathroom, no, please. No, no, no. I listen, 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 listen to me. No, listen to me. Please listen to me. Listen oh, to God. me. Listen, listen, isn't it better it happens now than in ten years from now when we got three or four kids running around? Please pay attention. I don't want to have to say this. Lenny, Lenny, I'm going to do it on the table. Some water, please. I think people are starting to look at us. Okay. Oh, God, Lenny, please help me, okay. Lenny. Okay, here. Lenny, I don't want to do it on the table. Okay. Okay. okay, take it easy. No, just take it easy. Take it easy. Okay? Lenny, okay. give me a quarter, please. Listen, listen, listen. Lenny, would you no, please help me? Let me keep more than a quarter. I'm going to make a tremendous settlement. Give me a quarter for the lady. Yes, I'm going to... Listen, honey, I'm going to make a terrific settlement. A generous settlement. I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to give you the car. I'm going to give you all the luggage. I'm going to give you all the wedding presents. I'm going to... I mean, you know, for a marriage, it's not a week old. That's, that's pretty good. I mean, you know, some people don't get that after 40 years. I kept the car in tip-top shape. I mean, that's terrific. I'm giving you... What is that sound? What are these sounds? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> come on, it's not the end of the world. It's just a crummy annulment. Come on. Come on. Ah, you can't pie. No, no. Okay. Is it all right? Thank you. Would you like some whipped cream? No. Come on. It's okay. Thank you. Oh, Charlie, don't you? Leave it. Fine. Ah. Okay. Listen, honey. It's good. It's good. Okay. 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 Take it easy. Take it easy. Okay. 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 Listen now. I, I, would li I, I would like, if possible, if possible, if we could settle, settle this, this, this tonight, you know? Because, you know, checkout time is, is 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. And unless, unless you want to stay on for a couple of days, and, and, then, and then, you know, I'll work that into the settlement. I mean, it's, 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 you know what? I feel, I feel that we're over the worst of it now. I, I actually, I feel closer to you right now than, than, than I think we've ever felt before, you know? Sometimes, 
when two people experience a common tragedy, it, it creates a bond between people that can last a lot. You know what I would like to do? You know what I would like to do? I would like to have, that we should have dinner sometime. You know? And I think that then we could look back on all of this and we could see all the good, all the good that's come out of this. That's the way. That's, that's the way I would like this to end. Wouldn't you? I mean, don't you think that's a good way to, uh, to look? this, Ralph. My mother and I want you to know we really appreciate this. I have office hours during the day, you know. I think speed is our best weapon, Ralph. In quick, out quick. That's what they taught us in the Army. And I know one is going to take from three to six months. If you want a divorce quick, she'll have to go to Santa Domingo. Santa Domingo? Well, she didn't have much of a vacation in Florida anyway. I wish you'd have let me discuss settlement. I could have saved you money. It's settled. It's settled. I, I, I gave her everything. I, all I kept was my savings bonds, $900. I could have done better for you. No, Ralph, I want it this way. I'm not looking to come out a winner on this deal. I'm, I'm willing to pay for my mistake. Of course, if she's willing to discuss it, I'll leave that up to you. The final papers will come through in about three weeks. The sooner the better. I'm heading for the Midwest. I'll send you my address. What's in the Midwest? Terrific girl I met on my honeymoon. Don't worry, I'll send you an invitation. <laughs> Cantro from Florida? I'm here. I don't expect you to let me see your daughter right off, sir, but I just wanted to stop by and let you know that I, it wasn't some wild story I made up in Florida. I have gotten myself free. Well, I've got to run now because uh, I get myself set up. Please, please uh, say hello to Mrs. Corcoran for me. And would you please tell Kelly that I've got myself a room at the No Way Motel? No Way Motel. Good afternoon, sir, and I hope I see you again very soon. Yes, Ro. Sir? You show your face here again. I'm going to kick your ass right over the Canadian border.
I made it. I heard. You must be crazy or something. I'm out. I'm free and clear, just like I said. Hi, Kelly. You must... Hi. You must have been crazy just ringing my bell like that. What's, What's the matter with you? Hi. I can't talk to you. I've got political science. What is that? What are you talking about? Political science. We have serious things to discuss. Look, I'm very glad as you came, really. But the situation's Kelly. impossible. Oh. All right, just a minute. Um, Hello, Kelly. Hi. I've got to go. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you worried about your father? I mean, I'm going to handle that. My father says that if you're not gone by tonight, he's going to get you with his car. I have to listen, go. Listen, Kelly, listen. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm real surprised. I'm surprised by your reaction. I mean, I'm really very surprised. Pick the bad time to come. The bad time? Do you remember Florida? I mean, does Florida seem vaguely familiar to you? Certainly I remember Florida. I'll never forget it, but this is Minnesota, and I've got political science, and I've got to go. I'm really very flattered. Guy in that mind. What do you want? Kelly, I gotta talk to you. I'm sorry, I've got into this list. That's all right. Listen, I just need two minutes to talk to you in private. Hey, what? didn't you hear what she said the first time? Certainly I heard what she said. I'm only standing a foot away. How could I possibly miss it? I just need to talk to you in the car for two minutes. Hey. It's okay. I'll see you in class. I mean, what did you think it was, a game? Uh, this is no game. This is my life. I don't play games with my life. You really got a divorce? Oh, you think I was just really fooling around with you in Florida? Didn't I tell you I was going to get a divorce? I don't play games with my life. Gee, I'm really flattered. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth. I was really under the impression that our relationship... <laughs> ...was at a much more advanced stage than the point where you were really very flattered. I mean, I just gave up a whole goddamn marriage. Well, you caught me off guard. It's my first day back at school. I've got English Lit. Oh, you know, screw English Lit. I just gave half my life away. I mean... You don't even say hello to me. 
Where's your, where's your dear goddamn laugh? I haven't heard your goddamn laugh uh, one time since I've been here. I can't help it. Florida seems like such a long time ago. It's two weeks ago. What, you can't retain a memory for two weeks? I gave up $6,000. I gave up... I gave up my wife. I gave up my car. And you can't retain a memory for two... What are you... Are you... Re what was all... What was all that... You're sitting on my stool. That's my spot. You see... What is all that crap? I mean, really, this is just a bunch of crap. I'm a schmuck! I was very attracted to you. Oh, were you? You were very attracted to me. You were very attracted. That's, that's cute. No, that's a real, that's a cute thing. And so, so I was, uh, something to, to do. No, I, I, I can understand that. I can understand. Listen, what is it? I, I got a crummy divorce. What does it mean, right? I also got a suntan. I mean, you really have to look at it that way. That's the way life is, good and bad, you know. Well, the important thing is that you get the English lit. I think that's really the important thing that we, we do here. Hey. What? Don't get so morbid. Give a girl a chance. your last class. I'll pick your part up to your last class. Well, it's at 2.30, but I don't really mean... I was always supposed to meet someone. What, the guy with the big neck? <laughs> the guy's got a 48-inch neck. You know, he's finished. That guy is through. That's over, really. Lenny is here. But I wouldn't start in with him. He's captain of everything. I spent three years in the armed forces. That guy is through. sick and tired of you bugging Kelly. Yes, I understand your feeling. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Leonard Cantrow. I'm with the Department of Justice, the Bureau of Narcotics. And I'd just like to ask you a couple of questions. May I see that cigarette, please? May I see the fact that came out of? Want to just step back there a minute, please? You a student here? Yeah. What year are you in here? Sophomore. Mm -hmm. What's your name, please? You don't need my name. Son, I don't want to have any trouble here. Just ask your name. No. What is your name? What is your name? <laughs> now, see, apparently that fella has something to be frightened of. Do you fellas have anything to be frightened of? No, I don't. Uh-huh. How long have you known Miss Corcoran, please? About, about two years. Two years. Is it the best of your knowledge? Does she use drugs of any kind? No. Do you boys have any reason to run? No. Well, then why don't you just walk, then? Just walk on. You tell your friend I'm coming back tomorrow. Thank you, fellas. Just keep your nose clean. Kelly? Keep moving, please. Suggest a place wherever you want to suggest. We have a summer cabin in the mountains. It's 
it's not heated, but we could have a big fire. All right? Cabin. A cabin. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the nerve to try something very dangerous? What do you think? I mean, what do you think? We'll have to take off all our clothes. Okay? What a terrific idea. Whatever it is, I love it. Remember, I'm not going to sleep with you. That's all right. Even if we just did this, it would be terrific. I've never done this before. A girlfriend told me about it. I love her. Whoever she is, I love her. Well, I'm way ahead of you. Let me help. Oh, no, no, no. That's the whole point. No touching. We take off everything and get as close as we possibly can without touching. It's a lot harder than it sounds. I love it. I love it. All my love. I wanted to be in a place like this with a girl like you playing a game like this. Come on, hurry up. Let's play. I don't know if I can go through with it. Oh, yes, you can, sure. I mean, it's just a game. The worst thing that could happen is you'd lose. All right. Step back a few feet. One more foot. Why don't we begin? Why don't we... Should we just start? All right, I'll go first. Okay, now you. Now what do we do? We just walk towards each other and see how close we can get. But we mustn't touch. I think we're close enough. No, um, I think we could get a little close. You do? I do. I honestly do. Father misjudge you, Lily. I really do. You're the most decent, honorable man I have ever met. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I'll sleep with you tomorrow night. Oh? Oh, I'll be back about 11. Some books for class. No way up. I knew it could be like this. Never was like this. I knew it was possible. Don't let me fall asleep. I have to be back by eleven. I knew I wasn't crazy. A lot of people might have thought I was crazy. I knew, I knew it. I, I think I'm going to surprise a lot of people. I know one that's going to be surprised. Don't worry about your father. Your father and I are going to understand each other. It's, it's just a question of us sitting down together. I love listening to you. 
positive about everything. Daddy the same way. You like that, huh? I love that. But I don't want him in this house. I don't want him in this town. This is my house. I pay taxes in this town. I don't want him in my town. I don't want him in my house. Well, why not, Dwayne? Because I hate him. That's why not. But despite that, Kelly says he's an admirable young man. Well, can't you at least see him? For me, Daddy? Please do it. For me. I understand you're quite taken with this part of the country, Mr. Cantor. Uh, Leonard, yes, ma'am. I like what I see out here, and I like what I breathe out here. And I've just about made up my mind that I'm going to make this my home. Oh, well, from what I've seen, I'd say you're a very determined young man. <laughs> <laughs> I take that as a compliment, Mrs. Corcoran. Thank you. Well, I don't mind saying that this is one of the finest meals that I've ever had. Oh, thank you, Leonard. It's simple, you know. Mr. Mr. Corcoran doesn't really care for fancy food. Though I imagine you've tried just about every kind of exotic dish in New York. Exactly. See, that's, that's the trouble. It's exotic, but it's not honest. I mean, it's fancy, but it's not, it's not real. I mean, this is honest food. There, there's no lying in, in that beef. There, there's no... Uh, Insincerity in those potatoes. There's no deceit in the cauliflower. This is a, a totally honest meal. You don't know what a pleasure it is to sit down in this day and age and, and eat food that you can believe in. Oh, oh what an original way of putting it. <laughs> Leonard's so positive, isn't he, Mother? Who does he remind you of when he's so positive like that? Oh, dear. You know. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness, why didn't I notice that? Oh, of course. Tell me, Leonard, have you given any thought to what your future plans might be? I've given it a lot of thought, Mrs. Corcoran, a careful thought. Uh, I thought, actually, I would like to do something that concerns the land. The land? Oh, you mean, you mean farming? Farming? No, I don't really think so. And yet, it's hard to say. You see, I want to get back to origins. To, to basics, you know, back to the soil, so to speak. So many young people today are, are going in that direction, concerned young people. I think we've taken enough out of this country. I, I believe it's time that we started to think about putting something back into this country. Oh, you know that's very well put, Leonard. You know, I read an editorial in the Minneapolis Star this morning that said the very same thing. Really? I didn't see that. <clears throat> Can I get you something, Dwayne? No, thank you. I wonder if you ladies would allow Mr. Cantrell and I a few moments alone. Hmm? Oh, yes, of course, certainly. Mr. Cantrell? Excuse me. Yes, 
Sure, thank you. I don't smoke. Leonard. Sir. I was very quiet at dinner tonight. Because I was listening. I'm in the banking business, you know, and I'm called upon to have many business dinners. I find I can tell more about a man by listening to his dinner table conversation than by reading all the books and the records and the balance sheets in the world. I heard everything you said. Your feeling about the big cities, the clear air out here, the honest food, getting back to the soil. And I will tell you, quite honestly, I was very impressed. I'm very glad to hear that. Oh, I'm impressed. And I think I can also say, quite honestly, I have never heard such a crock of horseshit in my life. Sir, there's no deceit in the cauliflower. Where do you get ideas like that? They just... Did you just come into the New York head of yours? I was merely trying to impress the fact that it was a, a I, I pleasure to... I see through you. You don't think I see through you? You could wear two wool sweaters and a raccoon coat. I'd still see through you. I've never once tried to misrepresent myself uh, or Leonard, deceive uh, anybody. Uh, Leonard, you think you're quite determined, don't you? I think once you get your mind set on something, that's it. Leonard. You don't know what determination is. I eat determination for breakfast. You want to see a brick wall? You're looking at a brick wall. Very sorry to hear that, sir. Did you honestly think you could come out here and wise guy yourself a girl like Kelly? There may be a wise guy, that football player away, but... This is my baby you're talking about. Nobody wise guys away my little baby. I have nothing but the deepest respect, love, and feelings you for... You want to talk figures? All right, let's talk figures. You tell me your figure, I'll tell you mine. I understand. You mean, what do you mean, money? Is that what you're using? Five. How does 5,000 grab you? I'm shocked. I am shocked. You would even remotely suggest that I'm, I'm going to take some... I'm talking 5,000 tax-free dollars. Is that remotely enough for you? Remotely suggest that I'm going to agree with Because if it isn't, I will go 10,000. Now, that's a lot of bats and balls, Cantrell. There's not enough money in all the banks of Minneapolis. 15,000. 15,000. You're talking to a brick wall, young fella, a rich brick wall. In all the banks of Minnesota. Have you any conception of what $20,000 feels like, what it looks like? In all the banks of the United States of America. I'm talking hard cash, goddammit! Cold, hard American currency, 25,000 goddamn dollars! Look, Mr. Corcoran, I didn't come out here to negotiate for Kelly. I came out here to fight for her. I spent three years in the United States Army. I fought every goddamn minute of those three years. Unfortunately, not overseas because of a minor back injury. But in the small army towns of this country, against the narrow-minded, petty-brained bigots who look down on anyone who's nothing more than your average, hard-working, enlisted man, I don't want your money. I don't want your goddamn lousy $25,000. What do you want? What do you want, God damn it? I want Kelly. I want Kelly. Well, so do I. God.
Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God and signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church. Into this holy estate these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause where they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else forever hold his peace. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? I do. I, Leonard Allen Cantro. I, Leonard Allen Cantro. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make the light of his countenance to shine upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen. So concerned with, with taking with taking things out of the country rather than making a contribution and, and putting putting things back in. Uh, you, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Well, I think you can get a lot of satisfaction from planting things. It's more like Thomas Jefferson, you know. Yeah, exactly. We were visited his home exactly. in Monticello lately. Yes. He said, the, you know, the best government is the least government. And yes. His way of doing it was something fabulous. The home he designed, very, very resourceful. What business are you in? We make uh, food for veal calves. It's a specialty kind of food that develops uh, <coughs> a European type of, of uh, veal calf. Uh huh. You know, I'm really wide open as far as uh, where where I might. Uh, Go with that, you know. But insurance is a uh, yeah. is a field that's been with us almost since the uh, what company it's one are you? Of the first. Uh, uh, oh, it's called Alexander and Alexander. It's a uh -huh. nationwide firm. Nation. Mm -hmm. the, uh, is, is that a going field in this area? Oh yes. But there's a lot of there's a lot of money in tear gas. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. But is your business oh, here. bring you traveling? Oh, here oh, we here are. Here comes yeah. the bra. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking all over the place for you. I'll be, I'll be with you in a second. I just, uh, Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, I would like to get back to, to origins. In fact, I think that, you know, many people, they don't think like this, but I think that we've taken enough out of this country in many ways, you know? I feel that all of us should think about putting something back in, you know? Mm. I'm in athletic equipment now, <laughs> you know. It's interesting. Yeah. What are you uh, interested in being when you grow up? Well, I haven't decided yet. How old are you? Ten right now. Ten? I was ten. Excuse me. Sure. Come on, Dean. 